Here at Viridor, we are committed to providing a clear and effective health and safety management system. In order to ensure the effective management of health and safety in Viridor, clear minimum health and safety management standards will be established and achieved. To facilitate the delivery of these minimum standards, processes and procedures will be developed and implemented. The safe system of work applicable to all ERF sites is known as the ERF safety rules. This set of procedures must be followed by anyone working on our systems to protect them from danger. Let's first have a look at the types of danger present on our ERF facilities. The first type is inherent danger. This danger relates to the potential danger caused by hazards within the system. Examples of inherent danger are steam, pressurized air, electricity, natural gas, chemicals and high temperatures. The systems are designed so that when they're in their normal operating mode they may be operated without danger if routine procedures and suitable equipment are correctly used. When work takes place where the plant is taken out of its normal operating state or if persons are working who are unfamiliar with the systems then the ERF safety rules specify how to achieve safety from the system. The second type of danger is intrinsic danger, the potential danger caused by the specific work to be performed. Examples of intrinsic danger are manual handling, use of substances, kosh, working at height, use of mobile plant. This will be controlled by assessing the risks of the work to be carried out and detailing a safe method of work in a risk assessment and method statement. Furthermore, the safety of persons at work shall also be achieved by maintaining at all times safety in the working environment. This is known as general safety and applies at and in the vicinity of the place of work. Examples of general safety are housekeeping, spillages, access and egress routes, other working parties, vehicle movement. General safety will be controlled by a point of work risk assessment to make sure the ERF safety rules are implemented, carried out and managed to the highest standards Viridor have established key roles who all play a vital part in the ERF safety rules procedure the competent person being one of those roles the first key role is that of the senior authorised person they are trained and highly experienced in the ERF safety rules. They are responsible for assessing the risk assessments and method statements for the task to be carried out. The senior authorised person will then decide the safety precautions required to achieve safety from the system. They are also responsible for authorising and cancelling any safety documents required for the task. The second key role is that of the authorised person. They are trained and experienced in the safety rules procedure. They are responsible for participating in achieving safety from the system, correctly implementing specified procedures before the work commences. The third key role is that of the nominated supervisor. They are responsible for establishing general safety prior to the start of a task. They may also have additional responsibilities, which include the control and issue of certain procedures and safety documents. The nominated supervisor can be responsible for multiple working parties. The fourth key role is that of the competent person. They are the individual or supervisor of a working party who will be carrying out the task. They are responsible for receiving, clearing and transferring the safety document, only signing the safety documents once they fully understand the precautions required. They are responsible for carrying out the point-of-work risk assessment before starting the task and for maintaining general safety throughout the course of the work. The first consideration taken by the senior authorised person when assessing a task will be if it's taking place on or adjacent to the system and needs a safety document. If it is clear that the work to be carried out is outside the system area, for cleaning or air conditioning maintenance for example, then the senior authorised person may decide to let you proceed without a safety document, although a risk assessment and method statement would still be required before the work is carried out. 
If the work is taking place within the system, then a safety document will usually be required. However, for work of a low-risk nature, the senior authorised person may deem that a written instruction is sufficient. In this instance, a safety document will not be issued. If a safety document is required, the first option will be to issue a blue limited work certificate. This will be used when the senior authorised person has decided to set limitations on the working party to protect them from the system. A limited work certificate shall define the limits of the work, testing or work area necessary to achieve safety from the system, for example scaffolding being erected within the restrictions of a specified area. The competent person and their working party must follow these instructions throughout the course of the work to ensure you are protected from any system related hazards. The second safety document is a pink permit for work. This is used if the senior authorised person deems that limiting the work or work area is insufficient to achieve safety from the system. Then the following precautions may need to be taken. To isolate, drain, vent, purge, release stored energy, protection from high temperatures, earth, high voltage equipment. The senior authorised person will create a plan detailing the precautions required and pass this on to an authorised person who will put them in place. Any safety precautions in place on the facility will have a red padlock and caution notice in place. These points of isolation must not be tampered with in any way. When all the precautions have been put in place, then the keys are secured by the senior authorised person in a key safe using their control key. A key safe key is then removed from the key safe and attached to the permit to work and will not be released until all the work has been completed. If there is no key attached to the permit for work, do not accept the safety document. No live work is permitted on low voltage apparatus unless a safe method of work has been determined by the senior authorised person. This may be in the form of a normal routine instruction or limited work certificate depending on the voltage involved. A permit for work restoration of motive power or ROMP is a green safety document which allows the competent person to remove an isolation and restore a system hazard to complete the work. The permit to work ROMP must be accompanied by an authorised written procedure. For example, when refitting a conveyor belt and commissioning it back into the system to remount the belt. Finally, there is a GP3 safety document. This is a special procedure used on low risk work where it's impractical to continually apply, remove and reapply safety procedures or it is not possible to follow the safety rules. An example where this document is used is during the process of recalibrating instrumentation when isolation and de-isolation happen in quick succession and it would be impractical to make a number of visits to the permit office during the calibration procedure. Safety documents are issued to the competent person by the senior authorised person once they're content the control measures and safe systems of work for the task are understood and in place. Depending on the nature of the task, the senior authorised person has two options about how the safety document is controlled. The first option is a personally held safety document. This is issued directly to the competent person and must be kept under their control at the point of work for the duration of the task. It must be dated and is valid on a daily basis. It's essential that you, as the competent person, read and understand the document, risk assessment and safe system of work for the task to be carried out. If you are unclear about anything within the safety document, you must raise these concerns with the permit office immediately. When you understand and are confident of the detail, sign the document. On signing the document, you must comply with all the conditions and precautions within the safety document. Once signed, the document will be placed in a document wallet and the competent person will attach a black padlock. This is ensuring that the competent person is in full control of the safety document. The key must be kept separate from the padlock at all times during the work. 
Any other paperwork can then be placed in the back of this document wallet. It's then taken to the point of work by the competent person. Your copy of the safety document must be available for inspection at your point of work at all times. At the end of the working period, the competent person is responsible for checking that the work has been carried out successfully and that any guards, walkways or panels removed are back in place. They are responsible for making sure the working area is left clean and tidy with no trip hazards. Once you are satisfied with the completed working area, you must make sure that all members of the working party stop work and leave the area. The competent person must now return the safety document to the permit office. Only at this point may the padlock securing the safety document in the wallet be removed. If the work is complete, the competent person shall sign off the clearance section of the safety document. When signing off this section, the competent person should note any exceptions which would prevent the plant being safely returned to service. For example, lagging or guards still to be replaced. If there are no exceptions, the competent person should state none, nil, na in this section. If the work has not been completed, the competent person should sign in the surrender section of the safety document. The safety document will then be retained in the permit office until the competent person requires it again. The second option the senior authorised person may use when issuing a safety document and when the work to be carried out will involve multiple working parties is through a card safe safety document system where a working party's safety document will be retained in a card safe rather than being taken by the competent person to the point of work. The issuing process is the same as for a personally held safety document, however a nominated supervisor may also carry out the issue process. The safety document will then be placed in the card safe and secured with an orange lock. Once signed, the competent person will then secure it using their black competent person padlock. Any further working parties who then need to work under this safety document will sign on to it via the transfer record form which slots in behind the card safe. They too will secure the card safe using their individual competent person's padlock. At the end of the working period, the competent person shall sign off in the transfer record and remove their competent person's padlock. If the work has been completed, then tick the cleared box, noting any exceptions. If the work hasn't been completed, then tick the surrender box in the surrender section. When they return again, they sign back onto the document via the transfer record and attach their black competent person's padlock. At the end of the task and when the final working party competent person has completed their work, the safety document is released by the removal of the last black padlock and orange lock and is then signed to clear the document. It's important to note that the competent person is only signing and taking responsibility for their working party's part of the task. In general, the competent person must provide immediate supervision, which means they must be available on site at all times during the work, and they must regularly return to oversee the working party. During these visits, they should ensure general safety is being maintained in the area. On some occasions, the senior authorised person may decide that immediate supervision is not sufficient for the work being carried out. In this instance, personal supervision will be stated on the safety document. If personal supervision has been stipulated, then you, as the competent person, must remain with the working party for the duration of the task. If at any time when you're working the conditions change or hazards arise, or if you misplace the safety document or associated keys, then stop work immediately and report to the permit office. If as the competent person you have to leave site, then work will stop, the area made safe, and your working party will leave the working area. The safety document must be surrendered or transferred to another competent person in the presence of a senior authorised person. 
Before work begins, as a competent person, it's your responsibility to carry out and complete a point of work risk assessment or POWRA to make sure you are happy with the task and working environment. The POWRA form asks a number of questions, including have all members of your working party read and understood the safe system of work to carry out the task? Do all members of your working party understand the contents and limitations detailed within the safety document? Are all the tools and equipment required safe for use? Have they been PAT tested? Are they free from damage and excessive wear? Anything found to be faulty should not be used. Have all members of the work party got the correct PPE and is it in good condition? Damaged PPE should be replaced before starting the task. Are the access and egress route available and free from obstruction? Also take into account routes you may need to use in the event of an emergency. Is the work area free from uncontrolled hazards? For example, you should be looking for spillages, slip, trip, fall hazards, leaking pipework. Will your work have an impact on any other working parties or will people already at work impact on your team? Discuss how this will be controlled with the competent person in charge of the other working party. If you find anything of concern but can deal with it, then please note your actions on the point of work risk assessment. If you cannot control the hazard, then do not start the task and return to the permit office. Likewise, if you get to the point of work and the safety document does not match the item of plant to be worked on, or if you're in any doubt, do not start the task. Return to the permit office. Once the power has been completed and communicated to the working party, the work may then proceed. The power must be completed at the start of every work period or when conditions change. Following on from this production, there'll be a practical demonstration of the safety document process, after which you'll be asked to complete a short questionnaire covering its content. On successful completion, you'll be issued with an authorization certificate, which will detail your level of authorization, which safety documents you may accept, surrender and clear, what parts of the system you may work on. Only approved persons may work on electrical apparatus. The expiry date of your authorization. Refresher training is required every two years. Finally, thank you for your attention during this presentation. The role of the competent person within Viridor ERF safety rules plays a vital part in keeping those on our sites safe and healthy. Anyone who is authorised as a competent person is at the forefront of our commitment to achieve zero harm. Thank you for watching.